Hey guys, Dr. Boats here coming out with another fantastic chemistry video and today I'm talking about classes of compounds. Now, I told you on the first day of classes to start memorizing the classes of compounds. It's very important. You're going to need to know the classes of compounds. So let's talk a little bit about some of them, not all of them. There's too many to talk about. Uh, we're going to learn a lot more as the semester goes by, but for now, let's start with the, with the easy ones. Now, whoops, sorry, I messed that up, didn't I? Classifications are based on this phenomenon called, or this thing called functional groups. Okay, functional groups are very important. If you can identify a functional group, you can identify a class. One of the more common functional groups, carbonyl. Carbonyl. Let me see if I can do a little better on that. Carbonyl, carbon double bonded to oxygen. Now, carbonyl is not a class. Carbonyl is a functional group, okay? A functional group is not a class. But it's, it can help you identify classes, though. A lot of classes have carbonyl. Some don't, some do. It's a good thing to look for. If you see a carbonyl, it already eliminates a bunch of possibilities, all right? Another common class, hydroxyl, or a common uh, functional group. Hydroxyl, another common functional group. Let me move my face out of the way here. There you go. I'm out of the way now. Hydroxyl, very common. All right. Now, there are three broad classes. There's hydrocarbons, compounds containing oxygen, and compounds containing nitrogen. Now, you can get examples of all three in the same molecule. It is quite common. Hydrocarbons, alkanes. SP3 carbons. Look for SP3 carbons. So, for example, that's an alkane. Why? It's, all, it's a hydrocarbon, which means it contains carbon and hydrogen only, and there's no double, no triple bonds. Alkane. Cycloalkanes contain SP3 carbons that form a ring, such as cyclopropane. There you go. There's a cycloalkane. Alkenes, they have sp2 carbon, so look for a double bond. Carbon-carbon double bond. There you go. Alkene. That's an alkene. Carbon-to-carbon double bond. Cycloalkenes, double bond inside of a ring. So, for example, there you go. That's a cycloalkene right there. It's a carbon-carbon double bond inside of a ring. Move that. Oop, that doesn't help, does it? Alkynes, triple bonds. Now look for sp carbons. Look for sp carbons. So, for example, oops, that's off the screen. All right, sp carbons. Carbon triple bonded to carbon. That is a alkyne, triple bond at carbons. And then there's aromatic. There you go. There's an example of aromatic. It's off screen too. I'm getting I'm getting a problem here, guys. There we go. Get a little more room. There's an example of aromatic. That's benzene. There's a lot more than benzene, however. Compounds that contain oxygen. Alcohols. Uh, everybody's favorite. Ethanol. Ethanol. Oops. Sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. Let me pull that back up. That's not good. Okay. I'm just trying to uh, uh, correct something here, guys. Bear with me. Ethers. Well, here's a common one, diethyl ether. Oh, I should mention real quick, this is alcohol here. How do I know? Hydroxyl attached to a carbon with no carbonyl. Hydroxyl attached to a carbon with no carbonyl. This is ether. There's an oxygen flanked on either side by a carbon group with no carbonyls. 
No carbonyl here, no carbonyl here. Carbon group, carbon group, oxygen, all day long, that's an ether. Aldehydes and ketones. Now here are the first examples of carbonyl containing compounds. Carbonyl containing compounds. Let's get a little more room here. Carbonyl containing compounds. The first one, keto uh, aldehyde I want to start with, okay. Aldehyde has a carbonyl directly bonded to an H. So the carbon of the carbonyl is directly bonded to a hydrogen. Has to have that or it's not aldehyde, it's something else, okay? And then let's put a CH3 here. Now, this could be damn near anything, okay? It just has to be a carbon group, all right? That's aldehyde. Oops, I'm going to bump into that, aren't I? That's aldehyde. Now, ketone also has a carbonyl, but ketones are flanked on either side by a carbon group. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it is storming here. So this is ketone. Notice the difference. Carbon directly bonded to a hydrogen. Carbonyl carbon directly bonded to some kind of uh, R group. As we, we call them R groups, which means rest of the molecule. Um, basically what it means is it's a carbon-based group. All right. Oops, and finally, carboxylic acids. So let me let me pull this down and pull it back up so that everything gets erased, hopefully. Oops, ah, I'm messing today up, guys. Sorry, it's the storm. It's killing me here. All right, let's go back to carboxylic acids. So I have some room. Here we go, carboxylic acids. Carboxylic acids contain, oh my goodness, ladies and gentlemen. Try again, one more time. Carbon, carbon, double bonded to oxygen, so carbonyl, directly bonded to an OH, or a hydroxyl. And R can be anything, including hydrogen. So this is carboxylic acid. Now what do you look for in a carboxylic acid? A carbonyl that has directly bonded to the carbon, an OH. A carbonyl that has directly bonded to a carbon, an OH. Carbon, OH. Carbonyl, OH, carboxylic acid, all day long. Nitrogen containing, amines, alkylated derivatives of ammonia, ammonia, NH3. So CH3, NH2, is a, an amine that's called a primary amine. And CH2, CH3, CH2, CH3, that's an amine. It's a secondary amine. And there's also a tertiary amine. Oh, let me pull that back down. There we go. Amides. Now, amides are like carboxylic acids. There's a carbonyl attached to a nitrogen. Okay, that's amide all day long. Carbonyl, and on the carbonyl carbon, there's a nitrogen. Now, this could have hydrogens only. That's an amide. It could also have couple of methyl groups or something like that. That's also an amide. And finally, nitrile. This is nitrile. This is not cyanide. Cyanide is this. This is cyanide. This is not nitro, uh, nitrile. This is nitrile. Nitrile is bonded to a carbon or a hydrogen. Cyanide is an anion. All right, and that is the end of the introduction to um, classes of compounds. Now, these were the high points. There's, I told you you have to memorize the inside front cover of your textbook. That is thunder, ladies and gentlemen. So you have to memorize the inside front cover of your textbook. Know all those classes of compounds. Now, I hit the high notes here. I kind of gave you an idea how to look at them. So please memorize them. They're worth valuable points in exams, and it's easy. All right, guys. Now, with that, I want to wish you all good luck and good chemistry. We'll see you soon.